Uh, we have regrets from Councillor Murphy, Bork, Dontremont, Deputy Warden, and Leblanc. I did visit uh, Kathy Sunday at the hospital. And, yeah, and uh, she wasn't sure what time she was going home, but she, she felt great and didn't think there was much wrong, so. But she was going through more tests yesterday. Uh, approval of agenda, or does anybody have anything to add? To? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Conflict of interest, does anybody have a conflict of interest around the table here on anything on the agenda? Presentation, there's none. Adoption of minutes. The first one is a regular council of November the 10th. So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Committee of the whole meeting of November 24th. Vote and seconded. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion <coughs> carried. Business arising from the minutes. Uh, one attachment or uh, report on business arising. Okay, municipal administration building. Do you have anything else to report? No, nope. the, um, the communication will continue on the, um, uh, the newsletter that will come out in December. Uh, there'll be an insert, as, as we discussed the last meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, there'll be survey and other uh, work uh, being developed in the coming weeks. So probably uh, come January, there'll be a more, the January meeting will have a more thorough um, outlook of how we're going to engage the community. Okay, yes. Okay. And I, I believe the other three are on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so, okay, dangerous and unsightly. <clears throat> right. 5A, that's the first one, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, policy that you, right, we've revamped with all the changes, the additions, and highlighted in yellow, right? Correct. Um, so, so the first part of the change is, is basically just defining dangerous and unsightly, and that definition essentially comes from the MGA. So it's just adding in the policy, pardon me, um, uh, the definition of, of, of what dangerous and unsightly is in our, in our eyes. Um, section 3.6. On page five, mm -hmm. uh, identifies the priority that the policy administrator will to determine the complaints or inspect the properties at the most urgent to remediate. So obviously those that are dangerous, um, a dangerous structure or situation within a predefined distance of a roadway or single family dwelling, and then unsightly situation within predefined distance of a roadway single. Uh, family dwelling and then derelict vehicles. That's the order of priority that 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 our um, uh, our department has identified as as uh, in accordance with the policy. And then uh, section four. Uh, this is the proactive section where we uh, in an attempt to decrease the amount of premises or properties, staff will proactively inspect communities two times a year to look for these properties using the scope of inspections in order of priority established in this policy. There is actually a checklist that they will go through. And mm -hmm. so this is, this, is, this is almost like an EKG, you know, you, you, get, you, get one, you get one report and then you, six months later you get another one so you can see, you know, if, there's, if, there's, if, there's, yes. if, it's, if the condition is improving or if it's, if it's actually getting worse so that it does set kind of a bar yeah. for some of these uh, properties. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, you know, in some cases, they, they are unsightly, but it's a temporary situation and it gets remedied. Yes, yeah. Uh, and so, but we were also, to further focus staff's work, a council's chosen to con concentrate its efforts on Highway 3, Highway 308, Highway 334, 
335 and 203, um, as the properties on these roads are typically the most visible. So this is a focused level of work. We did indicate that we would uh, look to do that by policy. Um, that doesn't mean we wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't uh, look at other areas. That this is our. Especially if this you get is, complaints from other areas. Yeah, I mean the complaints. It's not gonna. This is for proactive search. Yes. So the proactive search will be more on the uh, main streets because we understand that there might be some. <coughs> there might be some homes there in, in in an in an unsightly situation, but they're away from people's view. So it's 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 not. You know, it's really it's it's their private property. <coughs> It's not impacting anyone, so we yes. don't we don't want to make it uh, overly uh, cumbersome. And uh, on the back, you will see that there is a site visit checklist, which is new. It's not highlighted in yellow, but the last page and a half is, yes. is new. Yeah. So that's a summary of the changes that we would propose to your policy. This is your policy, so mm -hmm. uh, by approving it, uh, staff will will seek to implement. Yeah. Uh, well, we've had, we've had uh, ample time to, to read it over and, and check it out. So, uh, so if, what? if we make a motion to, if, if, we make a, if we make a motion to accept, accept this, it goes in with our policy we already have and it will be complete, everything's done? It would be, it would take place uh, immediately. It's not like a bylaw. Okay. It will be impl implemented immediately. Also approved. moved that we approve, right? For me, we approve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we um, that we accept this policy and administrative manual. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, is the word "accept" all right there or "approve"? Does it mean basically the same thing? Um, approve might be might be better. Um, yeah. Because it, it's it's a yeah I would say approve. Okay. Yeah. I I was just gonna make the motion. <laughs> okay. We we have a mover in the seconder. Any more questions? Um, yes. On the question, uh, I guess it's more of a comment. I guess like if we once this is now finally all going to be in place. I mean, we all know of the properties that are out there that stand out. It's going to, I feel, it's going to be hard for us to apply this policy to, to places that are, are bad or somewhat bad, but nowhere near as bad as the bad ones. And is there going to be, I feel there's going to be people say, well, if you're not going to clean those up, don't, don't bother me. Do, do, does anybody else have that fear? Well, I don't think we're going to pick and choose. Like I think what Alan said was that we're going to work on on, on the main yeah. ones. But, but any time yeah. we get a complaint, we're going to act. I mean, yeah. it's not. It doesn't mean that we're not going to look at the other. Ones. I guess what I'm, I'm trying to. Sure. I guess what I'm what I'm trying to say in my comment, like we have the policy. I guess are we going to are we going to have the guts to use the teeth of this to get something done because. Basically, the couple situations I'm looking at, they're continuously getting worse. So, and as much as we've been trying. Well, it's, 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 it's up to the staff once you have the policy in play, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I think, anyway. We're going to beat this around Basically. for years to come. Well, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it always, it's, it's um, the problem with the ones that are still existing now is uh, th those will continue to be a problem. Um, and uh, this policy, uh, what it will do, it will increase that list, right? Because now we're not just relying on complaints, we're actually going out and looking. And so if we're addressing, I think what I'm hearing Councillor Donaldson say is, is, if, is if we're writing letters to these people that have an eh property, uh, you know, their first comment is going to be, well, what about yeah, civic yeah. number X, Y, that is much worse. So I'm not going to do something. And, and that's a reality. That's oh, yeah. that, that I think we will have to address. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it has, it, it is a, it's, it's a real concern. And, and I think we, 
we just have to. Um, I think the fir the first the first run. I think we would want to be uh, just lighter in the communication and say, look, you know, this mm. is this is a property that needs to be addressed. And then and then when we do our second run, I think that's when we can be a little bit more yeah. okay. aggressive. Councillor Surrey, uh, I just like to add that, uh, irregardless of the the policy we have now, what we had before. I remember uh, the manager or the. Uh, Supervisor of the, the pub, uh, public works, you know they have a, a set of criteria they go through. They first of all go to call the people, stop and see them, and it goes on like it can go on for a year before you know it comes to the point where we gotta maybe do something. So they do certainly give people a chance to do it. But I, I certainly, partly understood what you meant, uh, Councillor Donson, and and I know know what you're saying. But I guess. We'll go to the same criteria as we go, and we'll see if this has any teeth. If we have to go to court, you know that's this is why we're setting it up. Well, thank you. Yeah. What, no, well, I guess I guess Guy, I understand what you're saying, but we've had most of this policy in place. This is just a little bit of an addition to it, and we was a long time getting the policy, and we really went hard on probably the second worst situation in the municipality, and then when it boiled down to it. It was either us put something in there and clean it up at a very high cost, which would have put that person out of his home, and we backed off. So um, all I'm saying is people that have got less of a problem are going to look at situations like that and say, why would I comply with their policy when you don't enforce it in the worst situations? And we backed down because we didn't want to put a person out of their home, basically, what happened. Yeah, so. On the good side of things, though, did we catch by people, by our, our people going out uh, there, we may catch some people that are starting to, and I know what you're saying, but on the good side of this, people that are starting, they stop, they stop and see them, and, you know, this is going to be cleaned up, maybe we won't get to that side. You know, on, on, on one other side, yeah. you, you're talking about. Yeah. You're that. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm a little frustrated because I've probably got the two worst mm -hmm. in my district. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, Question. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Welcome, uh, the, the welcome poll, poll banners. I think we did some work on that. Um, we did. That we did. Yeah. Um, Chris, did you want me to take this or did you want to take it? Uh, well, Chris did a lot of the work on this. Um, so I think uh, I think Chris will pro properly explain the type of banner that we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be. Thank you. Sure. So you'll see in the attachment that um, first of all, it's for information, so it's, it's not necessary that a decision has to be made because I guess there could be a few things that could come in later that could impact your decision. Um, but to to begin with. What we did was we looked at the different options that were available for poll banners. So there's the typical street banners that you see in towns and d different areas that attach to a street light or a telephone pole. Um, usually they're made of vinyl or another type of product like uh, mesh or something like that, um, which is what the flag shop company uh, provides. The not the problem, but the, the challenge with those banners is you have to have someone capable of installing them every time. So, for example, with the Jeux de l'Acadie, we had uh, help from Nova Scotia Power with the boom truck to put each uh, banner on the telephone poles. Um, so it adds to the cost and the installation as many times as you have to put them and in, in install them and uninstall them. <coughs> so. I was looking if there was any other option or alternative to those banners to not having to have someone install them for us because at this, if you have someone install them, you're also at their mercy of putting them up. So if we would ask to put them up one day, it may not be that same day. Um, so there is a company um, in, the, in the United States, in Michigan, called Flag Tracks, and that company has a track system that you install one time and you're, you're able to install the, the flag from the ground. 
so you don't need a boom truck or special equipment or something to get up there to install it on the bracket because the bracket goes all the way down um, to about five or six feet off the ground. So you kind of pull it all the way up. Um, the only difference with that is, of course, the price that you see um, per unit. So what we did was we compared both costs according to the size of the banner. We just gave you three general sizes. Um, and we gave you a cost scenario of three banners per site per 15, uh, for the 15 sites and four banners per site. Um, we did contact another local company, uh, Avid Media, but they weren't able to provide a price uh, in time for tonight and with the same uh, material that these two companies provide, which is called blockout mesh. So it's there's holes in the, the banner, so it allows the wind to go through it, and it, it uh, increases the life of the banner tenfold, um, probably doubles it at least. So just the, the cost comparison to that as well. But um, there, that is something that I would like to add uh, once they do provide that information uh, later on. So I don't know if we did contact um, the <clears throat> municipality of Clare to see how they would, or how they put up their banners each year. So they have a, roughly 200 banners um, that they put up, and they uh, are lucky enough to have someone from the community that works for Nova Scotia Power that does it for them. Um, they don't use a boom truck, but he has the equipment that allows him to go up onto the poles. Um, and that's how they get their banners. It usually takes him a week or so to put all of them up because it's just one person. We so 200. 200, yeah. So we would have roughly between 45 and 60. Um, there is a possible, I mean, we don't know anyone that would, I don't know if we have someone like that, that in, in the, the community that could do that for us. Um, so what we did was we priced uh, the cost of a boom truck per hour, which I did include in, in there for you. Um, so I, I guess that's it. Um, like I said, this is for information, and we would like to maybe bring something more official, but we, we were requested to bring the information forward at the next meeting, and so that's what we, we have here. So um, if there's anyone with questions? Or Councillor Surratt? Yeah. Uh, would you like me to check, or could I give you some information? I'll, I could talk to Mr. Burke about uh, when he spoke about that uh, Nova Scotia Power had a, gr a group that does this, again, this is second-hand information. Would you mind if I called them up and then sent you the information? Sure. And then, yep. you, could, and then you could check yourself yep. to be sure to verify that if you don't so, mind. Oh, definitely. I'd certainly like to send that in. You know, let's find out if the, that would t take a huge cost out yep. of that chunk. Okay, yep. I'll, I'll get back to you uh, tomorrow on that. Yep. Great, great work, Chris. Councilor Mills? Uh, just wondering about, you, you said the ones that are the, from flag track, flag tracks of Michigan. Yep. Uh, so that's a one, one time installation. Correct. And you can do it. Correct. Now, what the, these go like on on telephone poles, light poles. That's correct. What type? I wonder what type of uh, of uh, gadget is on there because sometimes these companies don't want something there that might be in their way mm -hmm. if they have to climb that pole mm -hmm. or if they have to go to the pole. Uh, so. If it's, if it's some kind of a gadget that's on there that's going to be in their way, you would really need to know that. Just you know. to give you a quick, and I'm no expert in it, but just to give you a quick uh, explanation of how it works is it's simply a bracket that's longer than the normal or typical metal bracket. Yeah. So it just goes all the way down to about six or five feet off the ground right. that, pr of, that allows you to put it through a track and then go all the way up. So it looks almost exactly like a normal metal bracket that you will put yes. uh, a banner on, it's just a bit yeah, longer. Yeah, but there's a track on the pole. There, there is, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, you know, that's what I would be a little it's concerned. You would yeah, really have it's to, possible. to check with, with Nova Scotia Power to see <laughs> yeah. that, that you're allowed to put that, that it's yeah. not going to be in their way. Because yeah, we would definitely, It's, it's yeah. the same as uh, uh, we, we used to put, uh, like, like when I was working, we used to put like what we call benchmarks, like something on the on power pole, and we were told <clears> no, because it's something that if, a, if one of their employees climbs mm -hmm. on that pole, it's a possibility that they can get 
scratched or hurt yep. or cut mm -hmm. on that on that whatever we put on the pole, and they didn't want us to use the poles if we didn't have to. So anyway, just it's just something, something to make sure yep. if we went that way. Mm -hmm. to double check. Thank you. Do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, Danny. Uh, just to let you know that I was talking to Ronnie LeBlanc mm -hmm. on Claire, and they've got it on the Nova Scotia power poles, and yes. they've had that. They had permission from them, and it's not an issue. They wouldn't be on the poles when they oh, put it on Minnesota. Oh yes, on the yeah. poles, but. but. But I'm talking about something that's permanent on the pole, like, like mm -hmm. that track. Right on. Yeah. They they would be they oh, they do? Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. So now can you come over here? Oh, go ahead. So, so yeah. the other assumption that we made was that you'd want multiple banners per site. All right, so three and four, so that's obvious. Um, that's, you know, the clustering might make it look nice. You know, just having one is not really enough. Uh, the other thing that you should know is that the 15 sites uh, were the 15 sites that YASTA had identified as, uh, as uh, you know, uh, tourist-related tourist, uh, uh, locations. It's in our book. Your correct, book. correct. It's, it's in, there's... Um, um, oh, it's in YASTA. So, so you may want to expand that. You may want to consider whether or not you would uh, take a look at, you know, there's banners for, you know, you may want to include festivals in that concept. You know, you have the Abuptic Festival in Argyle. You may want to look at that in terms of, you know, putting up the brackets and maybe, you know, maybe it's not the Acadian flag, maybe it's something else, you know. So there's, there's a variety of ways that you can come about this, um, something to consider. Um, also, the, the, uh, I, uh, the flag tracks um, obviously doesn't have a cost for installation and the flag shop may have an ongoing cost for installation. And so we've been fortunate that when we did the jeu, that that was done at no charge, but that was like a one time. If you're doing this every year, that might be different. So, so, so we can examine that. But of course, that won't have any impact on the flag tracks Absolutely. price, but it would have an impact on, on the... Um, on the flag shop price. So that's the kind of numbers that you're looking at. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, clearly. Um, we could table that. The, well, oh, yeah. Notice of, that. yeah, notice of motion is to bring it no. here. And then I think it's one of those things where you now know what it costs. If you're interested in it, it starts, uh, it starts to be a discussion during budget yes. right, yeah. deliberations, right? Yeah. You start to look at your priorities and whether this falls into uh, your capital investment plan or whether it's it's something that, that falls into operations. Okay, thank you. Next item is a Hibson Bridge condition. Um, I guess Kathy, Dr. Councillor Oak is the one that Asked to have this on the agenda. Uh, do any, anybody have anything to to report on this? Or do, oh, this is oh, this is a, a thing that was done in two thousand and nine. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, the report. This is mostly for information. Yeah, and to yeah. bring you up to speed. We haven't done the work uh, that Councillor yeah. Bork or that the council has asked us to do just yet. No, we wanted to inform you that this is what happened. Um, and yeah. if you had any questions about it, we could certainly address it now. Yeah. Okay. Would uh, if I if I if I lo I read that and it's a it's a great report. I in fact I remember seeing that. It was just I had just started here. If I remember mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It's come uh, a, a report like that. Do you remember, or does anybody have a price what it costs to get that report? Yeah. Um, Is it a fifty thousand dollar job? No, no. No twenty thousand. No. Um, on the high end, councillor said I believe it was eight thousand. Eight thousand. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm really. Yeah. No. No. I know it, and I, th I, I thank you for that. Yeah. I, you know what? This is something we need. I guess I know about what the other councillors feel like. We almost need some kind of a, some kind of a pricing. Somebody to look at it. This is a great report, and I think we need. Some professionals to go there mm -hmm. and have a look at it, and, and uh, you know, but certainly with everybody here, it would be nice for us to 
but this is the kind of report we need to make it for yeah. me to make a decision. Something and, like and, that. It, and it belongs to us. We own it. Oh, I, I think that's a mm -hmm. great piece of uh, we're, we're lucky. historical thing we have yeah. here. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Councillor Donaldson, did you have anything? Well, I, well, I didn't realize at first when I pushed my button that it was a 2009. Yeah. But. Um, I think we should uh, table this until we have a full council and oh, yes. have Definitely. a good discussion on it and decide yeah. where to go with this. Mm -hmm. But that report is encouraging. I didn't realize it. I had forgot all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Next item is the warden's report. That's only for information also. But if you have any questions or comments. Councillors' reports. Does anybody have uh, anything to report? Councillors? It's only been two weeks <laughs> since our last meeting. Right. Yeah. Not a report. Uh, I, I wonder if we could um, have the, the solid waste the waste park minutes supplied to all the councillors because me and Guy is on that. And I find there's a lot of interesting stuff goes on that the rest of council should know about. I requested the financials for Ryan and I was going to send them to you all to Jerry Brand. And uh, I'll have to remind him again, I requested last Thursday. Because people. It's, it's interesting, you're right, this. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we are making some, we do spend some major money there, and it comes from this municipality. So. Okay. Because that's one of the, uh, like that one and another, a few other ones I'm on, but I mean, that one I think is one that council would be somewhat interested in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. We've made arrangements. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you talking about the minutes? Having, having the minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. No problem. And then if anybody has any questions, it would be mm -hmm. right. Jeremy or myself if you can answer. Yeah. 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 <coughs> All right. So if nobody has a report, we'll go on to uh, the staff report. That's a good report. And it's good to have most of it uh, like a week ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's good to have that yes. to give us yes. a chance to read, you know. Mm-hmm. Some of us that are busy. <laughs> um, I didn't have anything in particular to focus on. I would just mention quickly that there's a couple of meetings coming up for aquaculture. Um, three, in mm. fact. One actually happened mm. yeah. uh, last week. Charlene mm. and uh, and the warden attended. Charlene LeBlanc. And, uh, and we also... Um, uh, have an upcoming uh, meeting in Halifax this Friday, which Aldrich and, and, and Charlene will attend at the very least, if not myself. Um, and uh, there'll be uh, a third, this is a conference actually in January. It's a, the, uh, the uh, aquaculture conference that the association puts on, um, which usually ends or or there is a like a sip and shuck or some sort yes, of like that's right. um, uh, it's uh, it's a featured uh, kind of event and uh, every year Nolan uh, participates his he has his his oysters uh, on the location sea um, the sea farmers sea farmers conference yeah. that's correct so um, I will say that uh, you know we get some we get some positive feedback from the that department because we're uh, engaged in uh, trying to test our waters, uh, so that is happening. We've identified uh, seven sites, and uh, there'll be um, some monitoring equipment that will be that will be put in the water uh, that will analyze uh, t tides and, and other other um, analyses. Uh, they're also going to be looking at you know what's in the water in terms of right. So so we we, we have a pretty good idea where uh, those locations are. are Ideal. We've we've engaged uh, with some of some of the people in the industry to give us a better idea of what they think. Uh, we have two people in particular in the region. I, there's more than two. I, I identify Sherman and Nolan, but I mean Nolan. It's the family. Um, it's the Dion family uh, that knows a lot about it. And so, so there's a there's two or three um, different organizations in the aquaculture business in in Argyle, which is helpful. Um, 
and so uh, the province is looking to take on some of the recommendations of One Nova Scotia, and one of them is to, you know, I don't know if it's double the exports. I can't rem remember yeah. exactly, yeah. but it's either the value or the quantity of exports coming out of Nova Scotia. Well, we can't double the fish in the water unless we create it. So it's uh, so so aquaculture is a is a big piece to that strategy. So. We hope that we can take advantage. They were saying Friday what they do also, they, they go uh, at these sites where there's cages and, and fish, fin fish especially, and they, they check the sediment underneath on the bottom to see what they find there. And then they go out <coughs> a ways around that too to check to see if there's much difference, you know, if it's, if it's caused by the fish farms or or whatever, so they do a lot of testing. And, yeah. Is there another, uh, is there another uh, uh, aquaculture business on the same lake as Nolan is? Yes. Somebody said that the other day at the garage, oh, yeah. and I, yeah. I thought there was only one, but it's just, I said, it can't There's two, be. Yeah. There is a, is it, in the, I know it might not be the same thing, but is it the same type of business, oysters? Yes. Yeah. yes. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, no, no one has another site now approved. Oh, also. he okay. That's what he. Oh, I get out you. in the in the bay. I get you. Yeah, I get you. yeah there's you. there's there's Nolan has two sites and there's another developer that has a, a site okay. in Eel Lake. Yeah, but it's a smaller site. Yeah. yeah. Just lately? No, it's been pretty much about the same. I don't remember yeah. who was there first, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So, any questions on the staff report or any comments or yes, Councillor? Oh, just one, <clears throat> one quick question to to Alan. Maybe he will. Maybe he doesn't have the answer. With Novatech braids on the uh, the Dom Techs, that involves uh, their section has to be uh, what's the word now <clears throat> has to be blocked off one side because we the, the demolition if it if it goes. It'll be between Novatech Braids and uh, where Sumner Plumbing is. Her, her, the the former Hurlburt Construction. The former Hurlburt Construction. And the former Germain's building. Okay, so on, in on between the north that, side. so Novatech Braids would be. I guess I should know this, but would be a standalone then there. Well, it's it's an interesting question because it's a bit of a moving target. Um, oh, I get so you. so Novatech Braids certainly. I mean, the facts of the case are that Novatech Braids is on the southernmost end of right. Domtex, and they own that section of the building. What do you own? Um, so that so there's a there is a wall there uh, now. I would suspect that if you if you demolished um, after that wall, you'd have to make some assurances that there was that that wall is shored up. Yeah. Hmm. I think there was more concern on the other side because there isn't as much uh, stability or structure in between in between and so you know I know that that the uh, work is ongoing but I mean neither of those uh, facilities are being used in any significant way I know one is not being used and and there's there's you know this the, the story is it's like a saga like it's unfolding and so and so there's there's another tenant in in the uh, Domtex building that has recently received uh, news about their business, and so that might change the water on the, you know. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I I've heard that the the the, de the demolition could be from the north end all the way down. It could be in between. It could be. There's a variety of ways it can be done. Still, that would and be sure. there are financial implications of every option, right? Right. That's right. You know. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's uh, so we're working with Novatech. We have we are in communication with them. They understand what our plans might be, and they have plans of their own. And so we're trying to align uh, both so that it's respectful of what their plans might be. Isn't there is there any uh, part of the, the north end that's owned also separately from? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Part of it. The the former Germains and the former yeah. Herbert uh, properties yeah. are both owned third party. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what I thought. That was yeah. yeah. The discussion on at the at the at the board table and the industrial commission table is, uh, you know, which is more expensive, to actually purchase those and then take it all down, mm -hmm. or shore up the wall oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. to protect the interests of the third parties, yeah. right? So so it it really you know you can imagine. That that, uh, that 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 number might actually be closer than you think. 
Yeah. You know, right. because oh, yeah. because the because demolition when you can do it all at once yeah. is yeah. is much different than than having to take yeah. pieces of a property and, and make and sure the other isn't impacted, right? right. Yeah. There's a yeah. much different I mean, I certainly am far from expert on that, but I think logically I you, you can imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Councillor Mule, did you have a uh, yeah, but you, you, you're saying uh, you're looking at maybe the demolition of, of the whole from, from the north end to Nova Tech Braids. But what about Sumners? They're, I mean, they're an established business. They're still in there, right? And, and, and do they own their building or are they renting that from... from they're in the old... Uh, uh, they're in the old Hurlburts? Germains, I believe. They're in the old Germains. They were, but they were there when Germains was was still there, though. It's it's, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I know that um, you know all of the tenants have been notified of the potential change yes. on the, at that location. Um, in terms of exactly where they're located and what their arrangement yeah. is, I'd have to yeah. defer to Greg Shea on that. Yeah, because there were Germains was here, and then they were in the end, mm -hmm. where I, I remember going to Germain's for something and, and they didn't have it and they sent me to, to Sumner's. Oh, that's how that's I know that okay. Germain's, they were there when Germain's was there. Right. Uh, so, so you're saying that maybe there's a possibility that we would buy or look at maybe buying what's not ours and like, uh, it, that, it, could that, be, it could be financially uh, uh, more more uh, make more sense because I think if you know when if you if you demolish part of it then you've got to build something mm -hmm. if you leave them there you've got to you've got to make it sure make sure that yeah. so the construction of something to, to, to make sure that their building is, is uh, uh, secure and yeah. whatever you know so well I, I would suggest that that's not beyond the realm of possibility but that will depend entirely on on what the numbers look like, right? And, exactly, and, and that when when we know more, it'll be a decision at the industrial commission board yeah. table, yeah. which you sit. So yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and and according to your report, again, like the the price that came was a lot more than what was anticipated as well. So and, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I I can't hazard a guess, uh, an accurate guess, but I imagine that, you know, if if you mobilize the equipment to demolish a building, you know, it probably has to be worth your while to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think it's expensive to, to mobilize and, and, oh, yeah. and once you have them there, you, you, you want to work them. You don't want to make sure that the work is done. So, and I think it was a bad time of year to, to bid also. I think those are the theories that were, yeah. that were uh, presented at that Not table. Not busy enough. Maybe. You're looking for when to work. <laughs> yeah, I well, don't. Well, you know. Yeah, I, you know. But, but that's you take a chance. Not and the case. If it works the opposite usually. Yeah. Okay. We'll go on to other business. Uh, East Kemp, Kempville and Quinnan Fire Towers. Uh, do we have any uh, anything to report on that? Uh, do, do we don't know exactly what's going on yet, or? Well, uh, information is still not received. We've been trying to get it before the meeting. Um, but it's to advise you, at least to today, is to advise you that the province of Nova Scotia uh, has notified us that they would they they wish to remove the remaining fire towers in East Kempt and um, and Quinnan. And I, I believe they've done some. Um, well, I guess they've taken off the um, um, what is it at the top there? The the compartment. Yeah. Uh, they've taken that off on East oh. Kempt, but not in Quinnan. Apparently, the look there, yeah, the the is. actual yeah. yeah. So so I mean they're in they're not in the best shape. Um, they've they've been inspected recently. Uh, the province is no longer needing the the towers, and so they'd like to bring them down because of liability issues. And uh, before they did that, they wanted to contact us to see um, to see uh, whether we were interested in in the use of them. We don't have, you know, from a staff's perspective, uh, we don't have any municipal purpose for these towers. Um, but when you talk about towers and you talk about East, Pu East Kempt and you talk about Quinnan, it's hard not to think about cell phone service. So, 
So what we did was we got a hold of Bell and let them know that these assets were available um, or, or that they could become available and we await uh, the result. Um, the, the tower may be completely useless to them, but we haven't heard that. Um, so so from, from our perspective, from staff's perspective, we wouldn't recommend that, that, that we took ownership of these uh, towers uh, because we don't have a purpose for it, but that we could uh, facilitate a conversation between the province and Bell uh, to see if there's a use there. So that's, that's what we're recommending, um, and we wanted to bring that to, to council. Um, I don't know how rushed they are for a decision. They never gave me a deadline. Um, it didn't come to me under the normal challenges, uh, the channels of, uh, of um, procurement. Typically, when, when the province looks to divest property, there's, there's an official letter that comes out, and, and, uh, but it didn't happen that way. I'm, I'm curious as to why, but that's, that's not really overly important. I think we have to ask ourselves the question whether, whether we have a use for it. And um, from staff's perspective, we don't, but we didn't want to eliminate the bell mobility as an option. Councillor Mew. Um, it says that we have two. Is the East Pubnico one gone? Because there's a tower in East Pubnico, too. Well, that's theirs. Uh, they didn't me? offer it to us, apparently. But, okay. But it just says that there's only two. I'm wondering yeah. if that one was down, because we have three in the, in the municipality. Yeah. And I'm like you, I, I, I don't think uh, having those towers, to me, I mean, the liability, I mean, people just go there and they climb and whatever. I don't think that we would want to get involved oh, no. in, in owning something like that anyway. But it would be good if they could use it to, if Bell could use it. Uh, I heard that that there's a little bit of uh, phone service. They, they put a tower in Carleton. I was talking to Councillor uh, Cunningham, uh, and he said that there was uh, a cell service now in a lot of areas in that, in that area that, that never was, and he figured that maybe it could reach uh, East, uh, East Camp as well. So. Yeah. He wasn't sure, so. So they erected that? Apparently. I, geez. Wow. That, that's Good. what he said. He said, yeah. finally, there's, there's uh, I saw him on the weekend or last, last Thursday, I guess. Anyway, and that's what he said. He said, finally have, have uh, cell service because of the tower that they installed at the, mm -hmm. in, in Carleton, <laughs> the Carleton area. Okay, yeah. Councillor Sure. Yeah. Just to, just to add to what Councilor Mew said, that I don't see any value. You know, if staff hasn't seen anything, certainly I, I only see liability here and, and trouble. And uh, I guess myself, I'm the same shoes as Councilor Mew that, you know, we shouldn't bother with this. No. Right. Okay. We we'll wait to see what. Uh... Well, you could wait, or you could decide right. that that regardless of, regardless of what Bell Mobility says, you're not going to take ownership. You yeah, know, we can so make that decision. you could make that decision today if you wished. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, do not accept uh, the offer from uh, from the Department of Natural Resources on the towers. To the two towers, you can't open. Second. Heard the motion. Have any questions or comments or discussion? Well, well the comment, my comment would be, I, uh, I, go, I go along with the motion, but, but I think shouldn't we add unless, right? I mean, we just don't want to uh, uh, say we're not going to do it, but if, if, if uh, uh, oh yeah, we don't do it, but we if Bell it, wanted it, it's, it's, it's not ours. Work. Okay, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Question? Questions called. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Request for tax relief, uh, relief of taxes and interest. Thank you, sir. So, so just before we move on, um, we, I don't Sorry. think we need a motion for the Bell Mobility question because we're already doing it, but, yes. but that we'll, we will be bringing this back to council um, if there's any, any hope that, that they would do that. And, and they, may not, they may not use those towers, but they may use the location. They may feel the location is ideal. So yeah. you never know. So, yeah. so we'll come back to you on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, relief of taxes. Uh, is this property accumulated in error? Some interest and not a whole lot. There's three properties, right? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, we approve the uh, recommendation of relief of taxes on these three these three amounts for the amount of seven hundred dollars and forty four cents. I think. Forty nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Any more questions? So this, these just for for the for yeah. the for the sake of of, of camera. The listeners. Um, <laughs> yeah. For the um, these are in these properties are now inactive. So they're errors. They were errors. They were they never existed. They um, so it's not that we're relieving taxes to people. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually uh, following up on on PVSC who does a review and they determine uh, some of these properties had been. Uh, assessed an error or they just simply don't exist. Okay. Question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Next one is the Yarmouth International Airport Corporation. Recommended governance changes. Uh, I think CAO is going to speak on that. So um, the Yar Yarmouth Airport Board has approved uh, this document. Uh, well, the, not the document, but the process at which they're going to change their governance. And so they'd like some endorsement from the three municipal units just to make it clear what's happening. Um, <clears throat> there are two major changes that are occurring here that are being recommended. Um, the first recommendation isn't new. I think you've heard this before, that the new governance body of the airport corporation will actually be <clears throat> led by three to five business profess professionals uh, selected and evaluated by the funding partners using a predetermined criteria, much like we did with the REN. So uh, I think uh, it was, uh, the board was quite, uh, quite adamant that, that we move into, into that type of uh, uh, decision-making uh, body. Um, and the business-led board would eliminate the need for an economic development subcommittee. Right now, the, the Yarmouth uh, Airport has a separate subcommittee that deals with economic development. So that would disappear, because that was business-led. And so they had uh, the, um, the council-led board. Then we had created a management committee of CAOs that managed the, the manager. And then we had this side uh, um, uh, economic development subcommittee. So we're all just, just that's merging into one. Um, so we're also uh, looking at uh, the possibility that Acadia First Nation might, might want uh, representation, and may want to get engaged in the airport. Um, so so this, this document uh, takes that into consideration as a possibility, although that's not, uh, not um, certainly not anything certain. And uh, the other uh, recommendation is that there would be a regional a subcommittee of councils that would be created, and it would include Acadia First Nations at, if they if they agreed to to that. And their role would be to oversee the airport board, uh, oversee the agreement that you have signed with the airport. So that that group would be responsible for that. Uh, the 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 strategy, the business plan, all of that work would be done at the board level, and the CAOs would be non-voting members of the board, so they could provide transition and advice to that new board because there's a lot going on at the airport, and it can't simply be thrown on uh, volunteers uh, without some sort of transition. So that's the recommendation. Uh, they, they have certainly endorsed this. This is actually included in your intermunicipal agreement. The intermunicipal agreement says that we were going to do this. This is part of it. So it's not different than what you've already decided to do, but I think they, they, they wanted the, um, the three units to endorse the recommendation of the airport. So I would present that to you. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Councilor Donaldson? Yes, way, way back when the uh, federal government, government divested this property, 
Isn't this exactly the kind of board that was set up of uh, local business people and they blew through the money that the federal government left behind and now basically we'll be funding the airports to allow people govern the airport that we will have a whole lot of say over how it's done. Uh, and another th another thing, uh, the report a couple years ago, I, I, I guessing it's getting close to two years. They didn't they tell us that we couldn't afford to run this airport unless we had uh, help from the other two, at least one of the other two levels of government, if not both. Where do we stand on that? Because we're going on to almost two years now since that report. Like, is there any hope in sight, or are we just? Jumbling, we're right back to square one, far as I can see, with the way we're going to govern this thing. Well, it's it's true that when uh, the airport commission took over ownership from the federal government, that that was business led uh, by local it, business people. Lo local business people. Uh, we'll just do the same thing with different names. The 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 difference is uh, th th there's two. Uh, slight differences. Number one is that we now own the airport as opposed to the, 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 the community or the nonprofit organization owning it. And only because we had to rescue them and bail them out. Yeah, well, they got through, they got through the funding from the federal government that, um, you know, uh, was certainly not, not sufficient to, to run the airport. The, the federal government was spending a lot more uh, before that, and they decided that, you know, the amount of money, I think it was almost $2 million at the time, they tra transferred to this, this committee. They did the best they could, um, but, but it, was, it was insufficient to hold it forever. I think it was intended to last 10 years, and it did, just barely. And, um, uh, and now, of course, as you know, the municipal funding is, is going in um, uh, at a much higher rate than the federal government. I like to say hand over fist. Yeah. But anyhow, no, I've had my say. That's good. You don't have to explain no more. You know my feelings and position on this. I guess the only, the only other sorry, the only other point is that is that the these these board members would be selected by by uh, the councillors, so so they would have say as to who would be chosen to to uh, govern uh, the organization. I think I think it's fair to say that that the board um, felt like they had. A better chance in terms of experience if it was business led as opposed to council led. I, th I think no, that's. No, I don't agree. I, just because you can you know, own a bunch of dump trucks and excavators or you can sell merchandise or you can build something mm. doesn't make you qualified to run an airport, in my opinion. Mm. Anyhow, no more than mm. Councillor Charette. The. Um, didn't we agree to, uh, or maybe it was at the board level when I was one of those, uh, um, an alternate at, at those meetings, when uh, Calvin and, and uh, Lucia can't go. And I don't go very often, but when, when they're not. Anyhow, and I don't know if it was at this, at council level that we approved another four years. Mm -hmm. Right, so we did approve another four years. Mm -hmm. And the reason the four years was mentioned was because the, um, I can say it in French, but hold on. Yeah, the uh, landing strips will need a lot of work in the millions of dollars. So it's still good for another four or five years, but when, when it gets to those four or five years, something has to happen because we, be uh, uh, we won't have enough money to fix the air, the, the, the pave on the airstrip. So uh, that's why we went to the four years, if I remember right, Alain. Yeah. One yeah, of the that, reasons it was one, one of the reasons was we felt like uh, something very major had to happen in four years. Yes, it was a um, huge and, amount. and there's some capital money that's required from yeah. the and and logically that would come from the federal government. Right, and you have to have air service to get that money to to do right. Isn't that some of it? To to tap into a cap the typical a cap funding. Yes. you require regular scheduled service. service. There might be other avenues of federal funding that could come in um, that don't require that. Yes. But, but of, the, of the policies that you see, um, the, in particular the ACAP funding, which is Transport Canada right. funding, they have very specific criteria that you have to meet. Right 
So, um, and clearly that's why we've always uh, looked to maintain a passenger service because yes. it, it gave us access to those, to those funds. Right. It doesn't guarantee that, that you can get access to those funds. Yeah. It just these, puts you in the game, right? right. But though, where we've got another four years and we've already, already approved that, that we will be as a partner for another four years we've we signed on. I guess they're trying to get people in there, and I'm not, I know what Councillor Donaldson is saying. Uh, I guess uh, a few times that I've sat at the board meetings, uh, the old model didn't work. Why don't we try this? And I think it's a great idea, what you're doing. I think this is, this is the way to go. Let's, we have another four years in. We bought in, so uh, let's, let's give her, it's not costing us any money. And I, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea. I certainly support it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, you know, I think that this, the decision is probably at the board level, right? But I think because of the, the nature of the change, uh, they felt it was appropriate to get an endorsement from the three units. Technically, I think, you know, if you really look at the intermunicipal agreement, you probably already agreed to do this anyway. But uh, an, an official motion to endorse um, is, is what they're looking, is what the board asked for. That's what the board asked for. Yeah. I'd like to make that yeah. motion that we recommend that the new governance body of the airport corporation be led by three to five business professional carefully selected and evaluated by the funding partners using a predetermined criteria of skill sets. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Okay. Any more questions or comments or all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Well you need that second recommendation, the second one also on the bottom part. For that the regional sub subcommittee of council. Uh, yes, because that's where that's where the councils have that's where the councils have a layer of control, not necessarily on the day-to-day -day activity of the airport, but, but when, when the airport requests funds from the municipal units, it has to be in accordance with the agreement. Yeah. And so that group would be created for that purpose. You know, in the long run, what, what, when we had this discussion among CAOs, we said if we could get this, this group well organized, it might, it might be a group that could not only do work on that agreement, but could also look at industrial commission and look at other things. And so, so it's the same group looking at regional matters. Um, it doesn't have to be the same committee, but it, it's useful to have the same people having a regional conversation about the, the things that are, that are happening to us, which, yeah. which leads to a whole other, yeah. a whole other uh, conversation around the need to do regional, regional planning amongst uh, yeah. Yarmouth County, if not not further. Could that, uh, could that, would that mean, or could it mean from, I was reading what you had here, that the Industrial Commission would be no more? Um, I don't think it means that. I think uh, what we'd like to see is, is phase one, see how this particular group works on the airport. Yes. And then maybe if it's, if, if that particular arrangement is successful, that we might say, okay, well, how would this model apply to other organizations that we're, that we're doing regionally? Because, I mean, you know, the Industrial Commission, there's 15 people around the table, right? So we did that for a reason. It had its purpose. Are we, are, is that purpose now gone? Do we look at it differently? Or, or do we just say, you know, let's leave these structures alone and let's, let's, you know, pick two or three people from each municipal unit and have a quarterly meeting to talk about everything regional? You know, there's a variety of ways that we can do this. I think the important thing is that we have a regional conversation that is public um, so, so that our citizens can see that we do work on a lot of th stuff together. I think a lot of our meetings on the things that we do together aren't on TV, right? They're, they're, they're meetings that are not televised. And so it's um, not always obvious to, to the taxpayer how those decisions are being made unless they're following the minutes, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So there, there would be a value to, to doing something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Would I have a second question yes. on that? Yeah. Um, so, and maybe I'm, I'm off track here, maybe you could correct me. So would, could that mean that the, and maybe I'm on the wrong bunch of people here, it's kind of a little confusing. So the three or five people that have the skill set to run the airport, would this still be the three to five people that, would, that could possibly do the industrial commission? If they've got a skill set, here's what I'm getting at. They've got a skill set for the airport. What the heck are they doing around Dome, Tex, and the, you know? Well, might not be fair question. What I was referring to was the council level, not the oh, board. Oh, okay. So, so, and not I, here, I, not there. Well, okay. well, the board of the airport would still be a management led board. Of course. Um, what, I'm, what I was referring to was, was the, the oh, regional right. board uh, that, that is comprised of councillors. I understand. No. Right? And yeah. so, so that group would. That group would talk about not just the airport, but they could talk about other Fair regional. Terminal could be right. So how do we how do we decide that the you know that that that, that we, we all support the ferry terminal, or how do we decide that we that we should all support the airport or the the track and field or you know whatever the the initiative might be? It puts it at a regional a regional level. level. And yeah. it doesn't in, it doesn't enforce anyone yeah. to to make a decision uh, like it doesn't take away the powers of the municipality of Argyle or Yarmouth or the town, but it it's kind of like a, we're on the same page. You know, it, yeah, it's it's an it's an open discussion on the issues that matter, and then 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 so everybody, all the councilor councils are informed of of some of the regional issues that everybody sh is talking about. So we're all talking about it at the same time. Yeah, thank you for the explanation. Okay, good. Yeah. So you, you, you want a, a, a like to have a motion on this second one? The yes, the um, subcommittee, regional subcommittee of council. Yeah. Um, Along I, with, I like with Acadia that, Band uh, Nation, First Nations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. I like, no, I'd like to move that. That a new regional subcommittee of council be created, including the Acadia First Nations, if you know if they're willing, with the dual role of oversight advisory for the airport board and to create and execute a memorandum of understanding amongst the four strong units to commit to collaboration and partnership in the projects that matter most for the region. It's well put together. It moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Get back to um, next item is uh, correspondence and for information. Uh, the building permit comparisons for November for 15, 2014 and 14 and 15. We've had some <coughs> good year on, on building permits and, and construction. Uh, financial requests. There's none. Notice of motion. Anybody has a mo notice of motion for a future meeting? Okay. Question period. Any questions? No. Hmm? <laughs> so I guess we'll have a motion to go in camera. So move to one camera.